Hey peeps, I'm Rick Roberts, and welcome to the sermon section of our Soul Moment event. Um, what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be looking at the fact that sometimes society tells us we should have a certain thing, and when we see how people live, when we see what people have, we feel like we want that, we deserve that, and we do the same thing that they do, but we find that we don't get that, and we get a bit bitter or frustrated with the results. And so I'm going to be talking about this whole feeling, why people have what they have, why we feel this way, what are we doing, and how do we get what's meant for us, and how do we focus on ourselves, okay? And so, like I said, um, in life, as we grow up, society, our parents, tell us that we should strive for a particular thing, you know, the fancy house, the good-looking family, the good degree, the great job, and having money in the bank. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have security for your family and security for your future. The Bible does say, thou shalt not covet. And all that simply means is when you look to your neighbor and you see that they have a nice house, um, a great-looking family, uh, a great job, a, 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 an amazing partner, and when you see this, you feel this negativity inside because you do not have it. You feel this bitterness inside because you want that, you don't have it. You don't think it's fair that they have it, and why can't I have that? And so that what it does in turn make you disrespect what you have obtained, what God has given you thus far, and you feel very negative and bitter about your life. Now, there's nothing wrong with looking to your neighbor and feeling like you want to be inspired to grow, to be able to do more for your situation. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem becomes when you look to your neighbor and you start to judge them, you start to judge yourself negatively, and you start to say, well, why do they get to have it and why can't I have it? It's not fair. And you feel this bitter jealousy growing up inside. Okay? Um, the Bible also says for you to not look at your neighbor and to compare yourself and say, well, at least I'm not like them. I'm better than them. Because when you have that attitude of, well, this person's doing this, at least I'm not like that, you once again are taking away the focus of trying to make sure you're living in a way that is getting the best results for you to have the best um, life in alignment with God as opposed to you just getting by. In life, we're not supposed to just get by. We're not supposed to just exist. We're here to make a difference. We're here to be a presence and not just here to just skate through. And so with us looking at our neighbor and saying, oh, well, you know, this person is swearing, this person is drinking, this person is doing drugs, this person is dirty, this person doesn't even have a home, this person has, uh, has lots of property, but look at what, you know, they're, they're a jerk. When you're comparing yourself to other people, you are then lording yourself over that person. And God doesn't want you doing that either. Um, also, sometimes when you compare yourself to other people, you bring yourself down. To, to, and God doesn't want that. And so what is the healthy way? How do we go about living our life to be able to move forward in our, in our ambitions? And how do we live our life where we can be able to um, live in reality? Because sometimes in order for us to really see ourselves, we have to look at the patterns as well sometimes. And so here's how we do that. God has given us each a unique personality for a reason. He has designed your personality to be either, you know, people focus or task focus, to be very open or guarded, um, to be very self-driven or need to be uh, need help with motivation. He has designed you in such a way so that way you can fit inside his plan. And his plan is to have you linked up with other people to be able to move a particular thing forward. Now, I don't know what it is for your life specifically because, you know, I, I, I may not have met you, but God has been with you throughout your entire life, and he has been molding you, and he's been sending certain things your way or allowing certain things to happen to you so that way you can mold and shift your personality into a specific um, design for moving the plan forward. Okay, now this may sound so high and lofty, it may sound very confusing, so let me try to simplify this for you. 
Last night for the Identify seminar, we talked about the difference between a talent and a skill. Your talent is something you do naturally, and a skill is something you can learn. Now, I broke down and gave my definition of a talent, saying that a talent is a behavioral pattern based off of your personality that allows you to get a good result in that particular situation. Let me say that again, in case it was too fast. Your talent is based off a behavioral pattern inside your personality to be able to give you a positive result in that particular area, okay? Once again, your talent is something you do naturally. And then a skill is a series of foundational principles that are put together to get a consistent result. Uh, like I said, a skill is something that can be learned. So it is a foundation, uh, foundational principle that can be put together to get a consistent result. That is a skill. And so you can learn a skill, and the way that you really make that skill come alive is by putting your talent in it by using your behavioral patterns to get a good result on top of those foundational skills to be able to have a consistent result. That's what I'm saying. Like when you see people who are painters, when you see people who are carpenters, when you see people who are musicians, when you see people who are um, engineers, they put themselves into their work. And as they put themselves into their work, it then becomes masterful. And so that is what we're trying to aspire to. God has given us a personality. He has given us a unique personality for us to be able to have talents. And then as we learn and develop skills, we put our talents with our skills, and we are then able to have a unique style to whatever it is that we do. We can then become masterful over a period of time. And the more that we are able to utilize our skills, our talents, we can then be able to structure our lives in such a way where we can grow in our physical success that society sees, as well as in our character. Our character is the very most important thing that we have, because whether we have money or we don't, whether we have uh, a home or we don't, or whether we have a family or not, this is always with us, is our character. And God says he wants us to have the character of Christ because Christ's character is in perfect alignment with the principles that he wants us to have in our life. And it also teaches us to be selfless. It teaches us to be confident, but to be selfless, looking to love on those around us and to encourage and lift those up so that they can have a good relationship with God. That is the whole reason that we're here. We're here to, to worship God, to live out the principles of God, and help bring people closer to the love of God. That's the purpose of why we're here. And so putting all of that together, please, I know it is so easy to do with the, the society that we're living in. We have social media at our fingertips, in our pocket, you know, we get notifications as to what people are doing, as to what's happening in this world. And it is easy to say, oh, that person's better looking than me. That person's smarter than me. That person has nice things. Um, and as you see that stuff, you start to say, well, why can't I have that? I should have that. I deserve this. I deserve that. And we lose focus on the real reason why we're here. We're here to worship. We're here to live out the talents and the gifts that God has given us, and we're here to utilize the skills that we have learned and that we will learn for the glory of God. And like I said, the way in which you leverage these things, you can then be able to grow in your success around this world, okay? You can also grow in your ambition. Your whole focus should be trying to achieve the plan that God has for you and everything that is supposed to be, um, you know, good, like what society says, uh, will come just as a byproduct. Solomon um, was, was asked by God, what is that you'd like to have for me to be able to rule my kingdom? And Solomon said, Lord, I just would like to have understanding. And God says, look, Understanding is a very good one. I'll give you wisdom. Wisdom is more than just understanding. And with wisdom comes wealth, comes all these other things that people say you should be pursuing. Because Solomon had wisdom, 
Success was a byproduct to everything he did. You know, and that's what I want you to do. I don't want you to run for success. I want you to run for the love of God. I want you to strive for a great character according to the principles of God and let all these other things become a byproduct. Having a nice home will become a byproduct because you're living in the principles of God. Having a nice relationship will be a byproduct because you're living in that principles of being selfless and caring about the person next to you. Having you know, wealth will become a byproduct because you will learn to have responsibility and be a good steward of what God has given you in terms of money and assets. Let these things, you know, success become a byproduct of having a principle built on the Word of God, having a character built on the principles of God. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to continue with our Soul Movement program. Um, we have motion tonight at 7 o'clock, and after that, we're going to be wrapped up for the rest of this weekend. If you have an opportunity, go ahead and give our seminar I listened to from last night, the Identify Seminar, based on talents and skills. Um, we'll go a little bit more in depth into what a talent is and what a skill is. And like I said, your whole mindset is to not look and compare yourself to other people and feel negative about yourself, but is to look around and to say, you know what, I'm inspired by what that person's done. I see how they've done it. Oh, I didn't realize I could do it that way. Let me try this. Do not look at yourself and look at the person next to you and say, oh, well, um, at least I'm better than that guy. Or, you know, oh, wow, I, I, I could be doing a lot better because look at them, look at what I'm doing, you know, I'm, 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 I'm nothing. Uh, so, Properly assess yourself. Uh, the word says, uh, properly assess yourself by the deeds that you do, and then that way you can take pride in what you've done alone. Don't look at what someone else is doing and the fact that they're doing less. you saying, okay, well, I'm doing enough because I'm doing more than that person. Because no, you know, God has designed you and has called you to a particular thing for a reason. He's given you your skills so that way you can go out there and rock what it is that you're supposed to be rocking. So don't be looking at the person next to you and saying, okay, well, you know, that person gets up at 11 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm getting up at 8. You know, I'm fine. When in truth, maybe you should be getting up at like 6, 5 o'clock in the morning. Who knows? For you to be able to get a jump start on what it is that you need to be doing with your life. So stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop saying, oh, I should be having this. And focus on the love of God working in your life. Focus on the principles of God working in your life. Focus on your talents, the things that you are able to do naturally, and focus on utilizing that with your skills. Okay, obtain the right skills according to what's uh, what you're passionate about in your life, and you will move forward, and you will have a powerful and successful life according to what God has called you to. Uh, I'm about to wrap up. I just wanted to say this last thing. I mentioned this from last night. I mentioned it again today in the sermon. The last thing that is super important to help hold these things together is the process. Sometimes as we're working out our talent, as we're working in the skills that we have, we are trying to get a good result, but the good result just isn't coming. And the Bible says, do not grow weary in doing good. Now, the scripture I'm referring to from today is largely coming from Galatians chapter 6. So if you have a chance, read Galatians chapter 6. It's a fantastic book. But the word says in Galatians chapter 6, do not grow weary in doing good. For in due season, you will reap the harvest of all that you have sown. Do not get tired of doing what you're supposed to be doing. Do not get tired of loving on people. Do not get tired of doing the process, getting up, focusing on what it is you need to do, learning what you need to learn, and working it out. Do not get tired of that. And find a way to embrace the process. The sooner you can embrace the process, the better it is for you to go through the stages of developing into the person that you're meant to be. Because like I said, Going through the process, if you're not focused on who you're becoming and you're focused on the end result, you will get burned out quickly. When the wind blows, you will get cold and tired. When the rain hits, you will feel damp and depressed. When the sun shines, you will feel burned. You need to find a way to hold on to the, the right mindset going through the process Irregardless of whatever the season is in life, 
And that's why I'm saying the process is super important. Having the ability to persevere through whatever comes is going to help you to be able to maintain a positive attitude and to get to where you need to be in the end. Life is not a sprint, it is a marathon. You have been given a journey. I don't know what your journey is, but God is revealing it to you day by day. And so continue to hold on, continue to work it out, and continue to focus on what God has placed in your heart and on your mind to be driven to do. Because, you know, at the start, it's so exciting. You have that, that you know, fantastic energy. But as you're going, you know, Mile one, okay, mile two, all right, mile 10, oh, mile 16, oh, oh my goodness, mile 20, I don't know if I can go anymore, mile 24, oh, I'm, I'm exhausted, it's, it becomes a will thing where you have to just will yourself forward, mile 26, I've come this far, I can't stop, I don't know if I can go any further, everything's on fire, and when you com complete that last half and you get through that finish line, you just are amazed that you finished, you are so happy that you finished, and you can't recall all the stages of the process, but each and every step was necessary to get you to that end, to get you to that finish line. And so what I'm saying to you is, there's gonna be days where you feel like you don't remember the process, there's gonna be part where it seemed like it was unbearable, there's gonna be times where you felt like it was amazing. You need all of that to be able, for you to be able to see how amazing God is in your life and to appreciate what God has brought you from and how you made it to the end destination. And when you finish, or as you wrap up that particular area of life, when someone else is coming behind you and they're going through those difficulties where they feel like they can't go any further, you can say, look, I've been there. I know what you're feeling right now. I understand it feels like everything's on fire, your body's uncomfortable, that you can't handle going another step, but just keep leaning forward, keep moving forward, and keep powering through, you will get there. It may feel like it's impossible now, but you can do this, you will get there in the end. Trust me, I've done it, and you can do it too. That is why God is giving us a testimony. All the stuff that we're doing is our testimony, and your testimony is the most important and powerful thing you have to help shake up and change the life of the people around you, okay? Hang in there, continue to do the good work that you're doing. Do not allow the, the fact that you're feeling tired and burned out to, to win and take over. Keep moving forward. You're doing an amazing job. God is right there by your side. If you need strength, if you need power, if you need energy, call on him who is able to do all these things, and he will put it in you, and he will get you through. Okay? I'm Rick Roberts, and you stay classy. Bye. If you feel that you are a slave to something, if you feel that you are not good enough, that you are insecure about something, that something has a hold over you, you were not made to be a slave. That was not your design. That was not what you were put here to do. You were he put here to have a great, powerful, loving relationship with the God who made you. To be able to grow in the gifts and the skills that he has given you. So that way you can truly live in this life and not just exist in this life. You are valuable. Your hair, your clothes, your job title, your spouse, your kids, your house, your car, none of that defines you.